people just don't have the money. And some people have wasted our resources. And you know, when I look at the, the foot soldiers in all the parties, I'm like, Sabiuta Frache, Okasiape, and a Yitian Neshua Sum Prince. You're sitting there. The people who give you coins, who spit for you to lick, are safeguarding the future of their children. And they are passing on these tariffs to you. And you don't realize there's something wrong. Mm. We are a highly indebted nation now. Aren't we worse off than when we were going to Hippic? In fact, aren't we worse off now than in the administration of the current president's father when he was ceremonial president and the current finance minister's father when he was minister of finance with their borrowing that led to Kutue Champon saying, Yentia. In other words, you're saying, that, no you're saying that about 45, 50 plus years on, after this era that you speak of, we are back to a worse situation. Ghana is actually worse off. This is the. Who doesn't know this? Where are the mm. economists? You see, we pretend that a few people are the only ones who can think. Everybody can think. We acknowledge that some people have gone to study to be in certain fields of endeavor, but everybody who has to balance a budget in their home can think. Every housewife knows that when it gets to a certain point, you tell the children you can't take so much of the toilet roll. You can't boil the water till it's boiling like you're going to pluck the feathers off a chicken before you go and have your bath and then pour cold water in it. You have to manage. Cut your coat according to your shirt. What's wrong with us? So we're all sitting here, tickling ourselves and laughing and listening to speeches and promises. I want to hear Baumia and what he said about borrowing at the time when the previous administration went to the IMF. I mean, it's interesting because you listen to, to hear the likes Abby. of Dr. Maham Mohamed. I, I was hear going them. to mention his yeah, name. I want to hear them. Because there's that popular video where he talks about the fact that, you know, I, it, it was on news file with some Zeladi. Yes, I do. Of one Jimmy. I mean, we could, we could dig up my, my team is looking at things. But we can... Jimmy. Mm. Ghanaians are not stupid. We don't want war. We don't want battles. But we are not stupid. Even those who voted for you are whispering and saying, this is so bad. It's so bad. Let, let, How else do you want us to say it? Let, let me just, let me just, maybe if, if we can get snippets of that conversation, because I've I sent seen it both recent, videos to in, your, in your recent producer. times. Uh, the one where Gabby Otredako, uh, you know, talks about what it means to go to the IMF. I recall because I saw it again see, recently. And we'll before, check out. Did, before speaking did you send about those videos. Before, yeah, I sent them. I sent them. Okay, to, so we'll, we'll to, check them out. To um, your, your, your guy. And I, I said, with Gabby, I had to, you know, put the disclaimer there. He's not an elected official. He just happens to have some relatives in government. And he happens to be able to tweet stuff out even before the Minister of Communication, uh, uh, you know, uses it. But the point is, he said these things. And the party supports him. But let's say we don't use Gabi because he's not an elected official. He has no power. Except for those who are groveling and fawning, who will beg anybody as soon as they know their relative is in power. Then let's go and listen to Dr. Maud, Mahmoud Baumia and listen to what he said. He says, when you have no ideas, when you, you're, you're bereft of ideas, when you don't know how to run the economy, that is when you go to the IMF. And mm. now you're saying, oh, I never wanted to go to the IMF. The NDC told you, they said, look, we've gotten to a point where we need help. Go now or it's going to be worse. And you didn't. And you didn't. And you didn't. And eventually, what happened? Eventually, what happened? So the debt is for all of us. We're going to pay more for water. We're going to pay more for petrol. We're going to pay more for electricity. And now, we're also going to have the tow boots back. But they have already been destroyed. Because somebody's brain fart led all the toll boots to stop working. When we knew full well, we needed that money from the toll boots. So are we now to sit here and believe that the people running this country are brilliant? Brilliant, my derriere. The only people who call them brilliant now are the people who say they are eating ice cream when they are licking the exit of people's human anatomy. But the thing is, it shows clearly because the brown stuff will be seen on your lips and your tongue. 
Where is the brilliance? Where I'm saying the brilliance? then that... This is incompetence. Not, you are not impressed by... Impressed? I mean, impressed? this administration has touted... Impressed? You hear the president Touted? Speak, Show me he, results. He talks about the fact that his vice president is very able. In fact, only yesterday he made mention of that. And uh, you have these words for them? It's sad. This is what a lot of Ghanaians are thinking, right? Those who wait for food to be pushed off the tables so when it falls on the ground, they eat it like dogs, will come and stand on TV and give you analysis and say they are impressed. But deep inside, when they lay down with their wives, their wives look them in their eyes and say, Ah, and to me, where Jimmy sir? If you can't tell the truth, shut up. Are you saying you have no hope in terms of our economic, just, no. our economic recovery? We have the IMF deal now. No, it's, no, it's, right it's, now. A, it's a deal breaker, so to speak. Also cry on our heart, you know. It's a deal breaker. Hope. Right now, our hope is in the IMF. I don't know which 38-year-old boy from the IMF is going to be telling us what to do. But for all... Uh, yeah. I, I like the reference. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> Stéphane Roudet you are referencing. The 38-year-old who came. Uh, he, nice he, guy. He led the IMF team. Nice guy. But Stéphane my point Roudet. is, who leaves his house at rage to go to somebody's house at Kanishi to say, Charlie, things are not going well in my home. Come and manage my home for me for the next three to five years. Who does that? And still says... We are brilliant. And even worse, you, you get Gabby writing things like, uh, the, the, the what is, is scary. The what? There's something they write. Outlook? No, no, the, the opposition or the alternative. The, ah, right. The right, alternative. Right, right. Dude, you are the worst. You are the worst. If anybody can say it, this is not about MPP, NDC, CPP, whatever. This is the worst government we have ever had in this country. The worst ever. Look in at the all the metrics. Of our, Go and look at the I metrics. Mean, pre independence, we look had at the, the struggle, metrics. then post independence. Look at all the metrics. What, what makes this administration the worst? The worst? Bad decisions. Corruption. Worst nepotism ever. And promises not kept. All every man has is his word. Now, if you can't keep your word, you're not a man. And all every man can be is compassionate. But if you look at the monkeys that are in the sanctuaries and you look at somebody come to drop bananas by the roadside and all the monkeys run out and everyone plucks just one or two and runs back into the sanctuary to call other monkeys to come and get some bananas too. Do you know why they call the others to come and get some bananas too? Because they know that the bananas will rot in four days. So everybody must be fed. Now, if you are a human being and you can look at your country go to seed, you can look at your country get into debt and into slavery whilst you enrich yourself. If somebody calls you an animal, have they insulted you? Because we call the monkey an animal. Are you suggesting... The greed is I ugly. Mean, uh, the greed Krumer, is Krumer ugly. Krumer spoke about neocolonialism. But we're already there. Are you suggesting that on the back of our economic woes, we are slaves once again? Yeah, I, I, I used the word slave earlier uh, in a conversation, and one of my friends says, no, Chrissy, you can't say we are slaves. But is that, I just want to get it yes. clear. Is that what you're suggesting? Well, um, I want a nicer word for slaves, uh, because we are not necessarily in captivity with um, shackles on our Hands are our and, brains and, 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 and manacles on our ankles. No, our brains are free. But some choose, some choose to feed themselves and starve their brothers. And also, you look at the Galamsee in this country. Mm. It's Ghanaians who lead people to the Galamsee sites. I have a few lands in Adansi. Now, if somebody goes to one of my lands, and digs a fish pond on my land. It's either they are criminal and I'll have them arrested. Or they have my blessing. That is why the fish pond is there. And they are rearing their fish. It's as simple as that. So who are the custodians of the lands all over Ghana? It's the chiefs and citizens in that area. The chiefs hold the land 
yeah, and trust for the people. Mm. But who are the people who are working with our locals to do the galamse most in this country? It is a nation we are greatly indebted to. All right. Let so we me, are even afraid mm. to arrest their people. And, and even as you start talking galamse, I don't want yeah. you to get too deep into yeah. that, but we have a few videos that we want to yeah. start playing on Fantastic. different bits. Let's watch these videos and we'll come back into the studio with KKD. Fantastic. I think it's important to look at it. First of all, how many countries are currently receiving IMF bailout? And why are they doing so? And these are countries that have failed in managing their finances. Mm. That's, I think that's how you have to look at it. We, we went because the bottom line, we are going to the IMF because we have been reckless. We have been to the point of even, even what one could allege, criminality in some in some regard. Notice government has been overborrowing from the from, from the from the um, central right. bank, central bank, and and beyond that, we are having issues as we speak. This year so far, the CD is the worst performing currency in Africa. This year so far, you know, so really the idea is to see how that can help pop it up. We need the IMF because we have lack discipline in solving our own issues. But the money from the IMF, I'm not too sure how far that will go in resolving the issues. Because don't forget, two years ago, we went to the euro bond to borrow one billion. We still had issues. That by the middle of last year, our currency was competing with the criminals. And you know, what is the good news? At what cost? One, they say they will move all subsidies. Whether the subsidies are, are targeted at the poor or not, those subsidies are going. IMF are not necessarily interested in economic growth. IMF, their policies have never been to, as it were, help you create jobs. It is to make sure that, look, you can pay your debts, okay? It, and paying debts doesn't necessarily directly benefit the Ghanaian. Because, look, in, in Argentina, they've stopped them from even, they have to cut down the, um, the salaries to what? Doctors and teachers. What are, in June, if you're not careful, what's happening with the doctors? So all these things are tied. Beyond that, what are the other things that they are looking for us to do? They are also saying that there should be, government should do what they call right sizing. You know, now they use terms. It's, it's really downsizing or just laying people off. But now they say right sizing because they feel that the size is not right. So lay people off. But clearly, it is not going to happen. Mm. Workers are going to suffer. And they're not going to suffer because the IMF says so. Okay. They are going to suffer because we have been reckless mm. in how we spend the money that we've been getting. Right. Because, look, bottom line, brother, over the last six years alone, revenues from, from, from gold, they've been double what it was. You know, so at the end of the day, you ask yourself, where has all the, 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 the money gone? And mm. what is happening is that we are spending more and more money to pay our debts rather than investing in capital expenditure or capital projects, projects that will create jobs. So you are looking at it, the IMF will not create jobs. The IMF will not make sure that the salaries match up with inflation. IMF will make sure that hopefully, hopefully, the reckless spending will, will go down. And I think that's the positive aspect of it. Okay, thank and, you. Thank and, you but in terms of thank expanding... You, we were happy that we found oil, but the borrowing of this government, the reckless borrowing of this government, has compromised the whole oil discovery. Six times, you need six times of our oil revenue just to pay interest, not even capital. It's interest on the debt. So it is a, a really sad development. I mean, what fundamental issues that affect this economy have been addressed in this budget? You should ask yourself. What fundamental issues? If we had spent, you know, the money's borrowed, and that money borrowed is the equivalent of some 35, 37 billion dollars over seven years. Now, can you imagine what 37 billion dollars can do in an economy? 37 billion dollars. I mean, it's amazing transformation that you can, but you you can see. The investment the government is talking about. We are going to add about 800 megawatts of power. But we are talking system. about a record. You can, you can always talk, we are going to do this, we are going... The question is, what have you done? You've had seven years in government. What have you done? 
I mean, your record should speak for itself. You shouldn't be waiting for the if, yeah. The IMF, the IMF, oh, they can point to even a lot. Oh, yes. But, the, but the, uh, when the Kufu administration was there, with such meager resources, so much can be pointed to as well. Infrastructure, as John Mahama says, if you point to infrastructure, you are engaging in an exercise of mediocrity. But the IMF managing director put the nail on the head when they said that the borrowing done by this government has been used for consumption. It's not me saying it. It's been used for consumption and not for investment. This is the IMF's assessment. And if you look at the data that supports what she's saying, the infrastructure to GDP ratio has come down from 9.1% when the President Kufo was in office to 4.8% today. Infrastructure. You've what exactly I'm you're going to be unveiled on Thursday when uh, we address but you. you. I, 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 I don't want to, I can, of course I can, but I'm, I, I want to uh, leave that to breathe. But we are going to build a new economy, a different economy. And you will be hearing a little bit more because you cannot just criticize without providing alternatives. And we are going to, and we have anyway. Uh, we are, you can tell us something. As to what exactly I'm telling you, it's an exciting. I will tell you what it is not. It is not a doomsaw economy. It is not a dead goat economy. It is not a friends and family economy, right? It is an economy that will create jobs.